Hello, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to be showing you the best settings for gaming with the LG B6 OLED TV. Now, before we begin, it's worth mentioning that you should really download the latest firmware update for the TV. Now, for UK owners, the current firmware that's downloadable doesn't give you access to HDR game mode. But if you go directly to LG's website, you can download the latest European firmware and use that on UK units. That gives you HDR game mode and also gives you lower input lag for game mode across both standard and high dynamic range. Okay, so with that said, let's actually get on with it. Okay, so in order to get low input lag, you're going to want to select the game mode picture preset, which gives you a nice fast controller response. Now, once we're in game mode, the actual picture preset itself is quite inaccurate out of the box. You get garish, oversaturated colors, and it's quite bright and uncomfortable to watch. So here are some settings to kind of give you a more natural image using this mode. So first thing is the OLED light. And this basically controls how bright you want the general image to be. So in this case, we've set it to sort of dimly lit office environment. But again, if you're viewing it in a dark room, you can lower this setting. If you're viewing it in a brighter room, you can raise it, depending on how much light output you want. In terms of the contrast, the default setting we found to be clipping details in bright areas. So reducing this to 78 here actually gives you, well, it brings back more detail giving you a better image. So I would recommend doing this. The brightness control we left at the default. Now the LG OLEDs are known for really deep black levels. However, the information just above black actually contains a fair bit of digital noise. Now, if we set this to 51, we can actually resolve all the shadow detail, but it means the noise is a bit more pronounced. Keeping this at the default 50 means you do crush some mild shadow details, but on the flip side, you get slightly cleaner looking black levels, which is kind of a better trade-off in my opinion. The sharpness control we reduced to 10. Uh, this basically gives you an image without any artificial sharpening. So if you reduce this below 10, you start to soften the picture. If you up the setting above 10, you start to create haloing around the edges. Keeping it at 10 basically eliminates this and you just get a natural image. In terms of the color controls, we suggest reducing this from the default of 65 down to 50, which produces uh, more natural colors, which aren't quite as bright and overblown compared to the default presentation. The tint you can leave at the default setting of zero, that was fine. However, we did need to adjust the color temperature. The out of box setting was set to a very cool uh, color temperature, creating a blue image across the scene. Reducing this down to W45 brings this more in line with what you'd expect sort of films and TV shows to be mastered in. It's a warmer, but a bit more natural. And if you go into the advanced options, uh, the dynamic contrast and dynamic color, you'll want to turn off. Uh, this can make the image appear more bright and punchy, but it doesn't really look natural. So if you turn those off, you don't have to worry about the image being sort of uh, artificially adjusted. The color gamut option is another interesting one. Now, the downside with game mode on the LG OLEDs is that the TV is stuck in wide color gamma mode all the time. So if you're not feeding the TV with content that contains a wider color gamma, you get generally oversaturated colors, which doesn't look that great. Unfortunately, there's no way of changing this right now, but LG have done a good job with providing additional settings with firmware updates. So hopefully uh, this will be adjusted in the future. We'll have to wait and see. In terms of super resolution, you can turn this off. The gamma we've set at medium, which is appropriate for both a dimly lit and a sort of daytime sort of room environment. Then in terms of the picture options, uh, again, the noise reduction settings you can turn off. This generally eliminates fine detail from high definition sources, so we don't want that on. Uh, black level, this relates to the RGB range you're feeding the TV. So if you're feeding it limited range, you want to set this to low. If you're feeding it full range, you want to set it to high. Uh, Real Cinema is greyed out, so you don't have to worry about that, as is True Motion. Uh, motion Eye Care you can turn off. 
Okay, so that was a standard dynamic range. Now we're moving on to HDR. So we've got Last of Us already booted up in HDR mode. And like before, what you're going to want to do is to select the best sort of picture preset in HDR for gaming. In this case, we want to go down and select HDR game. And this gives you low input lag in HDR mode, which also comes in at 27 milliseconds, the same as SDR. In terms of the other settings, there isn't that much to change with high dynamic range on this uh, particular TV. For example, the OLED light and contrast need to be set at 100 in order to get the, the most sort of brightest highlights and the best dynamic range uh, when viewing HDR content. Brightness, we left at 50 again in order to sort of get cleaner black levels without introducing too much noise. Sharpness, we reduced from 20 to 10. And again, this creates a naturally sharp picture without any edge enhancement or artificial softening. The color and tint, we left at the default values. We actually found that the tracking was generally very good in high dynamic range. We didn't have to alter too many settings. Uh, just the color temperature we needed to reduce to a warmer setting to get a more natural image. In this case, W45. And then in terms of the advanced controls, again, you want to turn off the extra processing settings such as the dynamic contrast and color off. Uh, color gamut, this you actually want to set to normal. Probably wondering why normal? You know, high dynamic range content is in a wider color gamut, right? Well, on the LG OLEDs, normal is actually the automatic setting. So if you feed this TV uh, content that doesn't have a wider color gamma, it'll boot the TV into Rec. 709 mode. If you feed it with a wider color gamma like HDR, UHD, Blu-ray, it'll go into Rec. 2020 mode. So that is the generally correct setting if you want accurate uh, color tracking in HDR. And then super resolution, we can leave off and the gamma option is grayed out as it's not applicable with high dynamic range. And then picture options, again, you wanna make sure the noise reduction settings are disabled. The black level, again, you set depending on what you're feeding it. We're running with limited range, so it's set to low on our particular display. Real cinema is grayed out and motion IK you wanna turn off as this dynamically adjusts the brightness of the TV, which is not something you want uh, the TV to be doing. Okay, so that was our gaming settings. Lastly, we thought we'd also give you a few settings for general multimedia viewing as well. In this case, basically, the idea is to select the most accurate picture preset out of the box. In this case, you want to go down and select one of the ISF uh, picture presets here. We've gone with the dark room as we're calibrating for a dimly lit office. Uh, and once you've done that, most of the default settings are actually pretty accurate. So unless you're getting a professional calibration, you shouldn't really need to touch them. So for example, here you can change the OLED light for viewing environment. Uh, the contrast, I do suggest lowering to 80 though, as that brings back detail in bright areas that the TV is clipping with the out the box setting. Uh, otherwise, brightness, sharpness, color and tint, you can all leave at their default values and it produces a pretty sort of natural image. Expert controls, just make sure you turn off the extra processing features. So dynamic contrast, super resolution, edge enhancer, color filter, make sure all of those are turned off. Color gamma, select normal if you're viewing just standard sort of dynamic range, high definition content. Uh, the Gamma 2.2 should work very well for both dimly lit and sort of standard sort of living room conditions. In terms of the white balance and color management, I would probably leave these alone. We made some small adjustments in our unit uh, with our calibration tools. However, we actually found that the actual options themselves don't work properly. So for example, the saturation and luminance can create artifacts on screen. So my advice is if you're not gonna get a professional calibration done or you don't have the equipment yourself, just leave these at the default settings. The actual general color accuracy in this mode was very good. So we didn't see a need to tinker too much with these at all. And in terms of the picture options, again, make sure the noise reduction is turned off, uh, set black level to whatever RGB output you're inputting to the TV. And again, the rest of these settings, motion, eye care and true motion, you can turn off. 
a real cinema, you want to have this set on while watching Blu-rays. Uh, this is automatically greyed out here with uh, the 60 hertz output on the PlayStation 4. But if you want to get Judder Free Blu-ray playback, uh, make sure this is uh, turned on for that. And then the last setting is the aspect ratio. Now this is applicable to whether you're viewing HDR or SDR. Uh, we've got it on 16 by 9, but you also want to have the just scan setting on. And this basically means you're getting one-to-one -one pixel mapping with a 4K image. And if you feed the TV 1080p, 720, you won't get any additional scaling. Okay, so those were standard dynamic range uh, multimedia settings. These are the ones for HDR. In terms of the picture mode, the most accurate one to choose is actually HDR standard. You've got bright and vivid, which gives you basically a high peak brightness, but the images are very sort of inaccurate. Their color balance isn't correct. So HDR standard gives you the best out the box option for an accurate picture in HDR. And in terms of the general controls, all of the basic uh, settings are actually uh, pretty good out the box. So things like OLED light, contrast, brightness, color and tint, we didn't actually have to adjust. The defaults provided uh, a pretty accurate picture overall. The only thing I would uh, make sure is if you go into the expert controls, again, make sure the uh, additional processing features are turned off. Uh, color gamma, again, set to normal in order to get the correct color tracking. And then stuff like edge enhancement, color filter set to off. In terms of the advanced calibration settings, we'd suggest leaving them alone. And my experience on this TV is it was impossible to properly calibrate HDR at all, as the controls really didn't work correctly. And lastly, the picture options, again, turn off noise reduction, and yeah, you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so there we have it, the best picture settings for the LG B6 OLED. I hope you found this video useful and if you did don't forget to like or subscribe. Also let us know in the comments below what TVs you'd like to see us take a look at and we'll see what we can do. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.